Hello and welcome to this short tutorial. Today I want to show you something that no one talks about when people talk about compression and equalizing. And that's the thing, because if you equalize and compress, your voice might still sound too thick or too bassy. And today I'm going to show you how you can go from your unprocessed voice that sounds like this, right? So this is another test with the T-Bone EM8 to this, right? So this is another test with the T-Bone EM800 microphone. All right, so the problem is that you're using your video editing software and that's fine, but for audio, it's just not the right thing. Um, and I'm just talking about DaVinci. I don't know any other platform, so I will just go with DaVinci and compare it to Reaper. And in DaVinci, uh, the problem is I cannot really control my effects chain. So that's why I use Reaper for mixing uh, audio for my videos and for my films. So what did I do when I had this track right here? The first thing I did was I normalized it to minus well, actually plus minus zero dB. And then I did some voice processing. So the first thing I always do is some noise reduction. And for that reason, I use RX. I used this bit of the, of the audio, which I always record. It's just silence. And if we listen to this without the noise reduction, you can hear the, the room or the noise in the room. It's very subtle, but it's there. So let's apply voice to noise and take a listen again. It's a lot softer. You have to be careful when you use that. But in my case, I use it all the time and I use my uh, workflow to record um, either before um, I speak or after I speak to allow some silent part in my audio to have my voice, uh, my noise reduction applied. The next thing I do is I declick my audio. And again, it's RX. Um, I'm not going to talk about how that works, but the first thing I do to my waveform here is peak limiting. So I have my peak limiter and as you can see, the threshold is at around minus 15.3. And how I figured that, figured that out was I actually zoomed into my audio and I thought, okay, well, what's the average peak in my audio? And it was somewhere around here, meaning that everything else is just transients and loud parts. And I didn't want that because I want to have a balanced sound. That's what I want to go for. So I set my threshold to minus 15.3. And let's take a listen with the peak limiting applied. Bone EM800 microphone, and I'm very close to the microphone. And so let's take a listen without Bone EM800 microphone, and I'm very close to the microphone. And you probably can hear. So if you can see, uh, it actually reduces it by about 6 dB. Before it was peaking at around minus 6, and now it's peaking at around minus, I would say, 12 to 10 dB. So that's the first step. Because I want to have a balanced sound, and that's why I want to have uh, peaks in my audio, but I want to have controlled peaks in my audio. The second thing that you would usually do is you have some EQ and that's the voice cleanup I used. Uh, my workflow is I always apply a high pass filter at around 90 Hertz. Um, 
really depends on your audio, but sometimes it's 90, sometimes it's 100, sometimes it's 150 hertz. Um, it really depends on your microphone and your sound. So uh, the best thing you can do is listen and then apply the effect. So another thing I do is I find that the range about 250 hertz is always kind of like a problem spot. So I turn that down. And as you can see, I turn it down by about 3 dB and uh, subtlety is everything. Then I usually swipe around um, using the sweeping method. If you don't know what that is, um, I, I'm showing you, this is basically just a EQ band and you make it louder. You use that bell filter and then you play the audio and listen for a freaking frequency that is really, really bad. Bone EM800 microphone and I'm very close to the microphone and you probably can hear what the problem is already. I'm recording this to my and after you found your frequency, you just reverse it. You say minus, I don't know, like three. And then you listen again. Bone EM800 microphone. And um, but I don't want to apply that right now because I just did that. And I want to do as little as possible to my audio to keep it natural. So as you can see, these dips are all around minus two to minus three db sometimes minus four db but if you have to dip it like six seven or ten db um, there's something seriously wrong with your audio and you need to look into it so next thing i do is dynamic eq well that's the tdr nova and you can use it on em uh, eq but it is more than eq it's basically a frequency dependent compressor meaning that you can actually set the frequency and the compression settings like threshold and ratio attack and release times and basically um, if there is one frequency that is not always there but sometimes you can filter it out with this thing and it's pretty pretty useful so the first thing was voice cleanup with a normal compressor uh, with a normal EQ, then I would do the dynamic EQ. Let's take a listen without and with it. So that's without. Bone EM800 microphone. And I'm very close to the microphone and you probably can. This is with. Bone EM800 microphone. And I'm very close to the microphone and you probably. Again, this is very, very subtle. And you might recognize the third band here, which is about 7.1 kilohertz. And this is my de-essing. Um, so it's really, really great for de-essing your sound. Or uh, if there's one sound that's, you know, like every 10 seconds, you can filter it out right here. Next thing is my well, actually, I have this one in here, but I didn't use it um, just in case if you don't have TDR Nova, you can still use a normal EQ um, and do some further EQing. But then I go into Transient Shaper and Transient Shaper helps me basically to filter out the room some more, uh, filter out the reflections in the room. So let's take a listen without bone. EM800 microphone and I'm very close to the microphone and you probably can hear what the problem is or and this is with bone EM800 microphone and I'm very close to the microphone and you probably so then we have the first compressor and yes it's the first one so that's one thing that actually very, very few people talk about. You can use as many compressors as you want in your track. And I am going to show you why. So this is the first compressor. Let's take a listen without it. Bone EM800 microphone. And, um, and this is with Bone 
EM800 microphone and I'm very close to the microphone and you probably can hear what the problem is already. So as you might see, I don't use any makeup gain in the compressor and I have a very fast attack time, about one millisecond and a very fast release, which is 10 milliseconds. I have my ratio three to one. Again, these are just my numbers. Uh, yours might differ and you have to really listen for it. Um, but the second thing is my makeup gain. And this is basically just volume adjustment. And um, the way how I do it is I take a look at how much gain it reduces. Bone EM800 microphone and I'm very close to the microphone and you probably can hear what the problem is already. Okay, so we know it's reducing it about 4 dB. So I will go to my volume adjustment and type in 4 dB plus. And let's take a listen with this applied. Bone EM800 microphone and i'm very close to the microphone and you probably can hear what the problem is and you can see by comparison from in to out that uh, the in is is basically almost the same as the out meaning that the sound has changed but uh, it's not really something that jumps out so it helps keeping everything natural the second thing after I have my compressor and my makeup gain is the first dynamic EQ. And that is something, I think there's one guy talking about that. So let's go through the theory. What's the problem with EQ and compression? So the problem with EQ and compression is that if you filtered out some bass frequencies in your equalizer before you went into your compressor, the compressor will actually make the bass frequencies louder again. So to solve this problem, you have to put in a, another dynamic EQ or um, just a normal EQ and maybe you apply a high pass filter, uh, which I did here. It's about 80 Hertz, uh, but also you can dip something at around 150 Hertz. So the problem is um, after, some people think that after you put the compressor and the makeup gain in, uh, you're done. But basically what happens is, especially if you are listening to sound with the in-ear headphones uh, of different brands, they will actually bring out the bass some more. So you wanna have some balanced sound in your video so that, uh, you know, people don't have bleeding ears. So that's what I'm doing, what I'm doing right here. So let's take a listen without the dynamic EQ. Bone EM800 microphone. And I'm very close to the microphone and you probably can hear what. Okay, so let's take a listen with the dynamic EQ applied. Bone EM800 microphone and i'm very close to the microphone and you probably can hear what the problem is already i'm recording this to my zoom f6 recorder so you can hear it it's very subtle but you can still hear it and if some people are watching your videos with the in-ear headphones or some other headphones that you know bring out the bass um, which there are many of headphones that do that um, it's wise to use a EQ after your compression. So after I've done that, I'm going to use another <laughs> compressor. So this compressor, um, is just something to smooth out the audio some more. So let's take a listen without bone EM 800 microphone. And I'm very close to the microphone and you probably can. Let's take a listen with bone EM 800 microphone. And I'm very close to the microphone and you probably can.
So you can actually hear that uh, it makes it quieter. And sometimes that's not what you want in your um, com with your compressor. But the problem with this audio was that I had some transients and I couldn't get rid of them with the transient shaper. So I used the compressor with a very fast attack and release time to actually get rid of the reflections and this resulting in audio that is quieter. Bone EM800 microphone and I'm very close to the microphone and you probably can hear what the problem is already. I'm recording this to my Zoom F. So as you can see, I'm peaking at around, I would say minus 10. Bone EM800 microphone and I'm very close to the microphone and you probably... So it's from minus 12 to minus 10, uh, meaning we have kind of like a dynamic range of about 2 dB. I don't care how your numbers look. The only thing I care about is how my audio sounds. Then I have another dynamic EQ just to smooth out this uh, audio some more. Bone EM800 microphone and I'm very close to the microphone. Maybe you see that I didn't actually go to my 6K or 10K or 12K and boosted it because um, I don't need to. If you take care of these lower frequencies, um, your audio suddenly you know, gets cleaner and you can actually understand what the person is saying. So uh, rather cut before boosting. That's what I go for. And we are still low, so I have my EQ at, or at my makeup gain after the dynamic EQ at around 5 dB. Let's take a listen to this. Bone EM800 microphone and I'm very close to the microphone and you probably can hear what the problem is. Or Bone EM800 microphone and I'm very close to the microphone and you probably can hear what the... Pro so at the end of my chain, I have my brick wall limiter because I don't want this audio to go above uh, minus one dB. And let's take a listen now. Bone EM800 microphone and I'm very close to the microphone and you probably can hear what the problem is already. I'm recording this to my Zoom F6 recorder. So let's take a look down here and see where we are uh, clipping or if we are clipping. Bone EM800 microphone and I'm very close to the microphone and you probably can hear what the problem is already. I'm recording this to my Zoom F6 recorder and I'm recording it in... Okay, so we are about minus 5.1. So if I want to have my audio at around minus three, um, I can add two dBs down here. Let's take a listen and reset that. Bone EM800 microphone and I'm very close to the microphone and you probably can hear what the problem is already. I'm recording this to my Zoom F6 recorder. All right, so that should do it. And remember, this is just my track. This is not my master track. Um, I have my master track around here and it's different from here. So I want to make sure I have my voice, uh, which is the most important part in your video or in your movie um, at the right level for me, uh, because that's just a test. And um, I wanted to actually show you what I do. I have it at minus three. Usually I would have it um, between minus 12 and minus 6 dB, somewhere around that. But uh, if it's a voiceover, I tend to have it at around between minus 6 and minus 3 dB. All right, so that's it. And I hope you learned something. If you want to know more about my workflow, I will put a 
link in the description where you can actually download my cheat sheet for my workflow and how I do it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.